Hey guys and gals, Kevin Baxter with Pro Twin Performance and Baxter's Garage back again. Today, this is going to be a long one. We're probably going to run about 30 minutes or so, but it's been the long anticipated video about cam plates. That's right. We're going to cover oiling systems from twin cam to M8. We're going to show you how the oiling system works within the case, uh, show you a, a lot about cam plates, oil pumps, and how you can make stock much better. So stick with us. Okay, folks, so here we go. Let's dive in. All right, if you haven't seen the video that I did um, a few weeks ago about chain drive versus gear drive, uh, I'm going to put a link to that video at the end of this video. And I'd like to strongly encourage that you go through and watch that one because there's going to be a lot of information involving uh, the crankshafts, the case, and how the oil pump integrates with the uh, pinion shaft on the, uh, on the, on the crank. Uh, and it, it's all part of the oiling system. So it would be a great follow up for you to watch that video as well. So before we dive into this one, there's a couple of uh, things that I would like to cover first. Uh, we're going to be talking about things like comparing cast materials uh, to forged materials to billet materials. So I want to start with that with explaining the difference between cast and forged because that, that will matter as we start discussing the different types of cam plates and things. All right, so essentially what cast is, and you can see on a stock cam plate here, that uh, you'll have casting lines in between uh, and stuff like that. So basically what happens is you have a mold uh, in simplistic terms and then you have an alloy, aluminum, that gets poured into that mold and then it cools, comes out, and then these surfaces are, are machined. All right. Well, with a forging, what actually happens is the, the material, it starts out as a liquid, but it's, a, it's compressed at an extremely high pressure, uh, and it forges the material uh, into a particular shape instead of it just being poured in. Now, where that matters, uh, with cast material, as you can imagine, you're pouring that material into the mold, and you get uh, at, a, at a microscopic level. Uh, the, the material has can have you know small air pockets in it, but molecularly, you'll get little balls and, and bundles and a very uneven uh, layering, if you will, uh, of the material itself. Now, with a forging, what's happening, again, it's, it's that liquid, uh, as it solidifies, it's, it's pressed. So you get more of a linear grain to the material itself. Now where that matters, of course, is when you start uh, talking about thermal expansion and contraction. So with a, with a cast piece, because everything is, is, is not compacted together, it can expand more and change shape uh, and do different things. Plus, it's nowhere near as strong. So if you could envision uh, a sheet of plywood where you have multiple layers tightly compressed together, uh, a sheet of plywood is, is much stronger than what you would have with just a piece of, of hardwood in most cases. So um, of, of uh, any type of forged or billet piece is always going to be stronger and experience less thermal change than, than uh, a forged piece would always be better than what a, a cast piece would. So that's a, an important point to start with. So I, I think the, the an important thing to point out is people look at it as a cam support plate as being an item that just holds the outside of the cams. And it, it's considerably more than that. It, it's a lot more important than that as well. Uh, it, it also supports the back side of the oil pump, but what a cam plate is also responsible for is distributing oil throughout the engine case. So let's consider this to be an oil distribution block. All right, so if we look at uh, this particular cam plate here, you'll see the veins that run in, in all these different directions here, the veins there, the vein here, and you see these oil ports here on the back. So really what that cam plate is doing is, is maintaining oil pressure and distributing oil throughout the entire engine case. That's a very important point to remember. So to understand how that works, let's take a look at a twin cam engine case. All right, this is only the case half. Uh, again, we're, we're talking about twin cam and later. So there, there'll be several things here that are, are different than Evo and back. And uh, some of these things are good. Some of them are, are bad, but uh, are not as good. Let's put it that way as what the Evo was. Uh, but technology changed regardless. So 
When we're looking at this side of the case, this of course is the cam chest side. Uh, as I pointed out in that other video, you should probably watch, uh, you know, the oil pump sits in here, the cam plate bolts here. Now, with the oil pump on the uh, back of the cam plate, it's sending oil in various different directions. Okay, so when the oil comes up through here, it'll go through this passage here, and which goes to an oil pressure switch, then it goes through your oil filter mount to filter the oil, then it comes back into the engine case here, and then as it travels through the cam plate, through those, uh, th th through all the, the galleys, it then feeds these oil ports here. Those oil ports go into the lifter holes here to keep your hydraulic lifters pumped up. On the opposite side of the lifter bores you then have piston oilers. Now piston oilers uh, started with twin cam and the purpose of the piston oiler is to spray oil on the base of the piston to keep it uh, keep it cooler. Uh, so then it bleeds to the piston oiler once it sprays to the top of the piston the oil drains down into the engine case. All right. Now, also on this side, you have a sump side and a, and a feed side. So, and then you have your, your pump that's in here. So, you have a return, you've got oil coming through here into the pump. Uh, then you, again, you have, you know, pressure side, feed side. Now, on uh, twin cam soft tail models where you had the balancers, uh, this is not a blind hole in those. Uh, that also uh, port hole would feed the hydraulic tensioners that uh, hold the balancer chains in the case. So, as you can see, we've got oil going all sorts of different directions inside inside the case there. Now there are a couple of things I want to point out about the case also. Um, remember this fact because when we start talking about really good cam plates and oil pumps this is a very important point uh, that, that you'll want to remember. Uh, so again I was saying that you know the piston oilers you have oil spraying here uh, on the bottom of the piston but you also have that oil that's being pumped up the lifters that go up the pushrod tubes that spray on the rocker arms to lubricate the valves, lubricate the pushrods, and then that oil drains back down through a dowel in the cylinder back down into the case. All of that oil comes down here and collects in this bottom area here. Now, an interesting fact, you'll notice that there's a cavity down here on the bottom. That cavity is there for a couple of reasons. One, uh, if, if you happen to build up too much oil, which is called sumping, in the bottom of the case, it begins to bathe the, the crankshaft in oil, which produces an enormous amount of engine drag uh, and various other issues. Heats the engine up, uh, bad fuel economy, all those types of things, because you're creating more load on the engine. But anyway, you, so you have this cavity that's here on the bottom. The other reason for this is to catch any debris. Because as the crank is rotating around, that debris actually gets slung underneath here into this cavity and will hold it into place. Now inside that cavity there is a very tiny hole down at the bottom. Uh, you probably won't be able to see it on the video. But there's a very tiny hole and that's the sump hole. That's where the oil pump picks up the excess hole or excuse me, excess oil uh, from inside the crankcase and puts it back into the oiling system. Now you also have waste oil uh, that is collecting inside the bottom of the cam chest. Okay, because not, not only you get a, a little bleed off from lifters, things like that, but you also have the, the small holes that are in the cam plate spraying oil onto your cam chain or to your gears. Uh, and all of that oil has to go somewhere, so it collects down here on the, on the bottom of the case as possible. So, uh, or uh, 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 all collects down here. So, uh, what the pump's job uh, also is to do is to suction sump all of that oil that collects at the bottom back to the oil tank to start the process over again. So that's how the oiling system is routed through a case. Um, all right, so let's go let's go back to uh, the one of the issues that we have. I'm going to touch on something that has to do with with, with oil coolers. Uh, I, I want to do a completely separate video on oil coolers themselves, uh, but uh, as you guys know, I'm not I'm not one that's brand loyal. If I find a good product and that product works, I really don't care who makes it. But in this video, you're actually for the first time going to see me plug two different brands, 
And I'm doing that because they've proven time and time again to make a great product to solve a lot of problems and I haven't had any issues with either one of these products. So I have no problem at all telling you guys what I use. So I had mentioned when we looked at the case that, um, you know, how that oil comes through, uh, you know, it's picked up through the cam plate, then it goes through the engine case, goes through the oil filter, uh, and then it, you know, routed through a cooler and then it comes, uh, then it comes back into the case. So what I have here is a stock Harley oil cooler for, for a, a twin cam. So this mounts to the side of the case and then your oil filter was, would go here. I'm sure you've probably seen this before. An interesting thing about Harley's oil routing that I completely disagree with. Uh, when the oil comes uh, into the system out of the case, they actually route the oil through the cooler first. Then it goes from the cooler through the filter back into the system. Now, I have a couple of, a couple of issues with that. First off, we're routing dirty oil through an oil cooler. Now, if, if, if you've heard any of my discussions about oil filters and filters that have too low of a micron rating, a lot of times those filters spend a lot of time in bypass. Okay, the, basically the, there's not enough oil that can transfer through the filter uh, media that's inside, so it bypasses, so the engine doesn't starve for oil. Well, that means all of that trash that's in the oil then goes through the oil cooler and collect in all of these small veins. That can cause a problem. Now, <clears throat> the other issue I have with that is you've now cooled the oil. You have cooler, thicker oil now trying to go through a filter that potentially is already in bypass with uh, too tight of a filter media and that can create oil starvation issues. I completely disagree with how Harley routes the oil through their cooling system for those two reasons. So who I use is JAG. Uh, we've been running JAG's oil coolers uh, ever since we've opened the doors. And we were one of the, the first ones to actually install their fan-assisted oil cooler back in the day. And consistently, we see a 40-degree drop in oil uh, temperature, which is, is, is kind of a no-brainer. This is one of theirs there. So what I want to do real quick is, is compare the two coolers. You can see this one. It's virtually no tanks here. All you have are the veins. And compared to the JAG cooler, considerably different. So you have two large tanks on it, more oil capacity, and more cooling capacity. That's a great thing. And and it's a lot more efficient. The other is how uh, JAG's oil fil filter adapter routes the oil through the engine case. It actually routes the oil through the filter first, filters that hot oil, then it goes through the cooler to cool it down and inject it back into the system. So you get you know better filtration, less chance for bypass, and you don't have the trash uh, collecting inside the oil cooler like you would have with the stock system. So if um, uh, if, if you want to run an oil cooler, there, in my opinion, there really is no better way to either upgrade from your stock one to a Jag or just put a Jag one in the bike. So that talks about oil coolers and my deal on that. Okay, next thing we're going to talk about are the different generations of cam plates and how they've changed over the years. Uh, from first twin cam all the way to M8 and uh, we're going to cover uh, you know some, some of those small changes. So we start out with the one um, that plagued so many people back in the day from 99 to 2006, which are the cam plates that had your spring-loaded tensioners on them. Um, I also did a video on that that showed uh, what kind of destruction this can cause when these tensioners aren't done. Uh, so I, I would encourage you to watch that video as well. But this is an early, uh, again, a 99 to 06 cam plate with the spring-loaded tensioners. There's several things I want to point out about this. Notice there is a manganese bronze bushing inside there, which is fantastic. Uh, these also had mechanical bearings. Uh, if you're still running your chain drive, you would have a roller bearing on the rear cam and you would have a ball bearing on the front cam. Now when you upgrade to gear drive, this becomes two ball bearings. All right, and then the back side of the cam plate, again, you can see the bushing here. Uh, you can see all the holes where it routes everything through the case. You can see the chain there. I did remove the tensioner to make it easier to spin the cams, uh, but uh, that's that cam plate. So the next change occurred in on 2006 Dynas. Wait, let me back up a second. 
One other thing that was 99 to 06, this is the oil pump casing. Uh, the, you'll notice the O-ring around there, which ensured that you had a really good seal uh, from the oil pump to the cam plate. So that was another 99 to 06 deal. So on 2006 Dynas and in 2007, all models adopted the hydraulic cam plate, which was a considerable improvement over the spring-loaded tensioner, you didn't have as much wear. Those tensioners lasted much longer. Uh, they still have their issues, which we'll get to in a minute, but it was still a bit of an improvement. So when we move to the 2007 cam plate, you'll see there's no more bearings in here. All right, so your bearing is actually your, your oil. Your oil provides your bearing surface uh, on the cam. Uh, you'll notice that you still have the manganese bronze bushing in there, which is great. Uh, here, where you did have your spring tensioner, is now where your hydraulic tensioner goes. And you would see on the back here, that's also where another hydraulic tensioner would go. Okay, so that's that cam plate. And you'll notice too, and this was the same with the earlier one, you do have a spring in here which provides, uh, it's a pressure relief valve, essentially a pop-off valve that uh, maintains oil pressure above 2,000 RPM at you know around 30 to 35 PSI. So you have the uh, pressure relief valve in there as well. Uh, what they changed about the pump is first off they removed the o-ring from the back and also the gear rotor assemblies that are on the inside they did get a little bit uh, a little bit larger uh, to provide a little better oiling than what they did from 99 to 06 wasn't a bad thing uh, and the gear rotors that are inside there look like this it's a combination of of gears that fit together one inside the other and uh, they have the teeth on them here and you have two different sizes uh, you have a pump side and then you have the suction side. All right, so one set of gears for suction, one set of gears for pump. That's an important fact. Remember that. All right, so that remained the same as well. You had two sets of gear rotors. Okay, then in 2000, uh, 2011, another change was made, and this was uh, not a change for the good, in my opinion. Uh, the basic overall construction of the cam plate remained the same. Uh, you still had a, a, uh, a fluid bearing, let's call it that, here. Uh, but notice there's no more bronze bushing inside the cam plate. They removed that. So if you imagine, you, we all know about uh, the uh, run out, crank run out issues that, uh, that are commonplace with the stock Harley cranks. So you can, uh, obviously aluminum is a, is a much, much softer material than manganese bronze. Now, their idea with this was that they knew that they had more crank runout, so the cam plate became a sacrificial part. So let's run the pinion shaft through here, and this is the sacrificial part. If you have too much clearance, you're now not pumping oil through the crank, okay? And your oil pressure starts to drop. And very often when we take these cam plates out, you can actually feel this edge here where it's begun to mushroom and spread open. Um, again, making this a sacrificial piece, forcing you to replace it. Uh, where the other cam plate, at least the manganese bronze, you know, would hold the pinion shaft just a little bit better and help you main, maintain that oil pressure over a longer period of time. Now there was a time for a while that we were even servicing bushings in cam plates and replacing those and then uh, you know line honing them to make sure they were straight but as uh, we saw so many other collective problems with the cam plates it, it became not it just wasn't a uh, a viable option anymore. By the time you you know you pay to do that part, you might as well just upgrade the whole thing and put in a whole new cam plate. Okay, so uh, this remained the same pretty much until uh, the M8s came out. So uh, there were uh, several changes with the M8. They maintained the hydraulic tensioners. Uh, of course, it's a single cam now, but um, the tensioners. I want to show you a set of these. These are what the hydraulic tensioners look like, and these would you know bolt up to the cam plate there and then they have these shoes and instead of using spring tension they use hydraulic tension from the uh, 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 hydraulic pressure from the oiling system to maintain the tension on the chain so that explains how that works okay now for the uh, cam plate for the M8 uh, it, quite a few things changed uh, one of the 
first ones being uh, we've got one less cam here that's kind of obvious uh, but in general you can see the construction is is pretty much the same it, it is a cast piece uh, you have you know the veins to supply oil throughout the system you have hydraulic tensioner uh, there's no bushing here for the pinion shaft uh, one you also see you know there's plugs in all the machining holes for the oil galleys um, you still have a bearingless cam in here uh, fluid providing the the bearing surface there and uh, one of the major changes would be the oil pump and uh, one thing they moved the pressure relief valve uh, to the inside of the pump and they also changed uh, the uh, gear rotor size in there as well uh, again with the M8s you know, being uh, more actively oil cooled then uh, you need a little bit bigger uh, gear rotor in there to, to keep the oil circulated uh, but other than that for the most part it's um, again uh, we're following pretty much the same as, as we have here. Now, this is the point that, uh, let's get all this stuff out of the way. Uh, this is the point that um, I get into with what I'm going to go ahead and call it, guys. I'm going to I'm going to call it a brand endorsement. Um, as I, I say again, you guys know how I am. Uh, I'm not loyal to a brand, but when I find a good part and it works and it's proven and it solves problems and it's a fair price, it's a good value, uh, then I have no problem telling people what products that I use. So uh, the first one that I had mentioned, of course, was the uh, oil coolers from Jag and uh, the fan-assisted oil cooler in particular. Particular, they work incredibly well. So we're going to jump to the cam plate. I'm sure you guys have seen these. Uh, this is from s and &S, all right, and, and this particular cam plate is for a, a 99 to 06 application. It can be used uh, for a gear drive or chain drive uh, utilizing hydraulic tensioners. And I want to go through the list and uh, the, all of the, uh, uh, the benefits that you have with this cam plate and tell you all the great things about it that solves all the problems with the stock cam plates and greatly enhances things for you. Um, the, and I've got a, a list over here because the list is quite long. So uh, we're going to start off with it is made out of forged aluminum. So we'd already discussed the difference between cast aluminum and forged aluminum. And uh, the fact that it is forged, uh, as I said before, you won't see as much thermal expansion or, and contraction. Uh, the other, because again, being a forging, tightly compressed, tightly compact, uh, then um, it, it's a much stronger piece, right? So uh, not only that, it, it's just it's overall it's a better material. You 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 don't have casting flaws. You don't have you know issues with the uh, pressure relief valve sealing. Um, you know several things like that. There it's more precise because it is a you know machine from that forging. So that's uh, one of the first benefits. Um, the other you'll notice that we've returned with this bronze bushing uh, for the pinion shaft. That's a big bonus. The the next would be the fact that your pressure relief valve here is adjustable. Um, now I want to digress for a second and, and talk about oil pressure. Uh, it is great that it is an adjustable pressure relief valve. When you put them in out of the box they typically uh, you'll run a very you know normal operating temperature running a, a 20W50 regardless of synthetic or uh, our standard oil. You'll typically see somewhere around 15 to 18 PSI at idle, sometimes a little more, uh, and then above 2000 RPM, you'll see somewhere in the 32 PSI range, sometimes 34 out of the box. Now there's a, there, there's a, some may disagree with me on this, but uh, the simple fact of the matter is Harley engines were uh, more volume based oil flow engines than pressure based systems. Okay, so if you were, you know, I'm sure you've heard before people changing springs in the cam plate or pulling the springs out and, and I'll say kind of crudely stretching those springs, which is only temporary, to try to increase oil pressure. And the, the fact is, if you go back to, uh, you know, earlier bikes, you know, shovel heads, even back, at idle they virtually made no, no oil pressure at all, but they still had volume. Okay, the fact of the matter is, is that you really only need enough oil pressure to make sure that the oil is circulated through all the orifices on the engine. You need enough to maintain a bearing surface uh, on, on all the, um, you know, either a Babbitt bearing uh, or something like that, not a mechanical bearing. And you need just enough oil pressure to, to keep your lifters pumped up. 
all right so when you start excessively increasing oil pressure a lot of negative things begin to happen so if you recall I showed you on the engine case with that we now have piston oilers okay so when you have piston oilers and you have you know the oil all the oil draining back down into the crankcase of the engine you can actually promote sumping problems okay because you're moving a tremendous amount of oil you're moving more oil through the engine through those oilers through those orifices than the sump side of the pump can handle so you start building up excessive oil and and, and again in a lot of cases creating more problems than you're solving so it and if if you're having to elevate your oil pressure that much to 50 to 60 plus psi then that's an indication that you have a problem somewhere else you have a an issue with your lifter bore uh, to lifter clearance or you have excessive axial play on rocker arms or you have mushroomed push rods you know something like that is preventing the oil from circulating uh, it could also be excessive clearance on things like your your pinion shaft to your bushing or your cam plate um, you know all of those things that would require you to increase oil pressure in order to maintain a quieter engine you have a mechanical issue okay so um, you know it, it you really all you're doing is masking a potential you know masking a problem uh, by increasing oil pressure so uh, there's absolutely nothing wrong with maintaining 12 to 15 psi at idle uh, at hot idle and 32 36 psi above 2000 rpm because it's enough to circulate oil through the system it doesn't overtax the sump side of the pump uh, and it, it's still keeping everything lubricated, maintaining the, 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 the boundary layer of oil, and, um, and, and you know, you're keeping your lifters pumped up, keeping the engine healthy. So that's my, my take on the oil pressure side of things. So uh, you'll notice also where in the stock cam plate uh, you have uh, all of the, the, the balls in there to that plug the galleys for the to machine those uh, on the SNS cam plate you'll notice they're all threaded plugs now that's a great thing because you know you get excessive mileage or anything like that and you want to uh, just you know clean out your cam plate you can absolutely do that uh, it's also great for diagnostic purposes if you had an, an oiling problem in the engine somewhere you can pull these plugs out and run fluid through it uh, make sure all the passages are clean uh, so that's that's also a, a, a fantastic uh, feature there um, so that you know pretty much covers the cam plate so now we want to move to the oil pump so we're going to compare compare this stock pump to an SNS pump all right as I would mentioned before remember you have oil uh, extra oil let's call it waste oil bleed over oil whatever you want to call it uh, you've got oil that's collecting in the bottom of the uh, bottom of the crankcase side uh, of the case, the flywheel side of the case, uh, because of you know piston oilers and and coming from your crank bearings, things like that. But then you also have the cam chest cavity that's collecting oil as well. And in that cavity, you know that's from the small holes that you'll have in your cam plate uh, that are you know, feeding oil to you know the chains and the and the gear gear drive and things like that. So you've got two separate cavities in there both of them collecting oil but on the Harley pump you only have one set of gear odors for the scabbin side and you have one set of gear odors for the pump side and when you start pumping a lot of oil in there it it's cannot be quite enough scavenging power uh, and you're actually overtaxing the pump in a lot of cases uh, trying to sump from both of those cavities okay now when you get into especially with the M8s uh, where you know you have oil cooled you've got more oil being circulated through there as well it is really taxing the oil system and its ability to keep the, the, the sump up. All right, so SNS took a different approach. Now, this is their oil pump. There's a lot of features uh, built into the oil pump here. Again, this is, this is a forged piece, uh, very precise, very well done. Uh, one of the biggest things you'll notice is that there is a screen inside the pump here. Now, you may have seen some pictures, if you follow us on Facebook as well, uh, of a couple of engines where uh, one of them broke a piston skirt and sent debris throughout the entire engine, and uh, the other one was because of a, a cam chain tensioner failure uh, over a considerable period of time. And 
because again the oil filter went into a bypass and the pump is just something straight out of the bottom of the case it sent that debris throughout the entire engine if we had had if it had had an SNS pump in it then uh, you know having that screen in there would catch a tremendous amount of that debris and keep it not only from destroying the pump and the cam plate but obviously keeping it from being pumped throughout the entire engine so that's a that's a bonus there so we're going to take the pump apart we'll notice we've got one set of gear rotors here and uh, you know again it's a very precise fit very well machined piece we have a second set of gear rotors here all right and then we have a third set of gear rotors behind this plate so SNS recognized how important it was to keep the sump dry. They also uh, uh, recognize that you have two separate cavities there. So one of the most unique things about their pump is they actually separate the sump side with the in inside the engine case and the cam chest. So it has its own independent set of gear rotors for each one of those cavities to ensure that we're not overtaxing the pump's capability and uh, we're also keeping those areas um, as, as empty as we can of, of that excess oil. So that's a tremendous feature. Because of that and having the two separate gear rotors, uh, they're actually scavenging about 45 percent more uh, oil uh, from the bottom of the engine case than what you can on a stock pump. Uh, that's a significant amount, right? So it's it's ensuring you know the the health of the bottom end. So you've got uh, the debris the debris screen that I mentioned on this one scavenge side here. That screen actually works on both sides of the scavenge as well. Okay, so it, you're you're screening the filter from the crankcase side. You're screening the filter from the cam chest side. So that's uh, absolutely fantastic. Now on the M8 pump, uh, they of course did the same thing. The, the pressure relief valve is built into the pump uh, and on they have two separate pumps for the M8s. They have the uh, you know one for the oil cooled uh, oil and then one for the liquid cooled. So the oil cooled one has uh, a much coarser uh, tooth on, on your on your gear rotors again to promote that scavenging and and to keep the oil moving through the system, the volume of oil through the system as uh, as much as you possibly can. Um, take a look at my notes here, see if I've forgotten anything else. Um, guys, I, I think that that pretty much does it. So yes, this is, is going to be a brand plug. Uh, we are huge fans of SNS cam plates and oil pumps for all the reasons that I listed here. Uh, they've solved a tremendous amount of problems and uh, with, with this combination here and it's, it's just a, a great, great way to do a significant upgrade and make the engine last a long time. Um, and of course this can be run with chain drive or gear drive. I'll put a link one of these sides over here uh, to that gear drive versus chain drive video. I would strongly encourage you to, to have a look at that at, at the end of the video. Uh, and then also um, give some serious consideration to the JAG oil cooler, especially the fan assisted version. Uh, again, a 40 degree reduction in oil temperature is pretty significant. Uh, and it's just a great piece to keep the, the lifeblood of that engine, the oil, nice and healthy and clean. Uh, one other thing I wanted to point out, uh, guys, you know, we, we, take any, we get an enormous amount of phone calls uh, from folks just looking for tech support uh, and, and advice on what components to buy. And uh, of course, I, one of the reasons we do these videos is I love helping people. I, I, money's very hard to make these days. Uh, I, I work hard for mine and, and I imagine you do too. So that being said, we want to help people make an, as much of an informed decision as you possibly can before you go to spend that hard-earned money. And uh, if you call us for tech support and you need some help, things like that, I, I just have a small favor to ask. When you get ready to order your parts, give us a call and order the parts from us. Uh, it helps us continue to do these videos. Uh, of course, we like to get to know our viewers. That's fantastic. We like to hear about your successes. Um, but if, if we're not doing the install for you, uh, you want to do the install yourself, uh, you know, consider giving us a call and ordering the parts from us. It helps us a lot and we greatly appreciate that. So everyone, that sums up cam plates and oil pumps 101, I guess we could say. We got a little more in depth than that. Um, as always, uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel and click the little bell at the bottom there. That way you'll get notifications for our upcoming uh, tech videos. Um, and uh, also, I'll have the links on one side or the other here uh, to lead you to the video on the 
uh, gear drive versus chain drive and then I'll just pick another little video I think that might interest interest you and uh, one other thing I would like uh, if you guys could help me out in the comments section below uh, we could do tons of different tech videos but I want to help you the most so I would like to know the topics that you would like to know about so I had mentioned on a poll uh, talking about piston technology uh, you know hyper eutectic versus forged versus cast pistons and pros and cons and what all of that means uh, I had also mentioned doing some uh, uh, suspension driveline uh, and, and brake uh, system videos because when we're hopping up performance some people forget about suspension and brakes and that's another side of it's pretty important and another one is a bit of a sideline most of us like things that burn all things that burn gas so uh, another idea for a video I thought about uh, diving into an automotive engine actually tearing down that vintage 302 cubic inch inline six-cylinder uh, GMC engine so we could do a series on that as well tearing that down going through doing the machining processes and reviving that 70 year old boat anchor so again guys thank you very much for watching I hope you have a wonderful weekend and take care of yourselves ride safe